Hi, I'm Michelle Bege with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. How many years have passed since the signing of a peace agreement between the Colombian government and the FARC rebel group? We'll have the answer later. It's been 120 days since Peruvian President Pedro Castillo took office, and political turmoil is growing. This weekend, thousands went out on the streets to protest Castillo, and 28 opposition legislators in Peru's Congress have presented a motion to impeach him, citing moral inability to govern. One of the latest scandals involves Castillo's secretary, who, according to prosecutors, kept $20,000 in cash hidden in his bathroom office. The 130 legislator Congress will discuss the impeachment motion on December 7th. A final vote in Congress would require 87 votes to remove the president. And meanwhile, in Brazil, things are not looking good for President Bolsonaro, who continues to slip in the polls. He is surrounded by scandals and conflict, and his administration is in the middle of investigations over accusations of alleged mishandling of the pandemic. Former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, who served a sentence for corruption, is coming back to the political arena. In early polls, it looks like Brazilians are buying the comeback and giving Lula a broad lead in next year's presidential race. And speaking of comebacks, Mexico's Guadalajara International Book Fair is back after the pandemic hiatus. It is considered one of the world's most important book fairs, and it is now welcoming citizens in person again. The guest of honor this year is Peru, with a delegation of 65 writers and scholars. And now, before going Christmas shopping, take a look at these images in Chile. A mountain of discarded clothing can be found in the Atacama Desert, the driest desert in the world. The culprit is fast fashion. Clothing that isn't sold in Europe, Asia, or the United States makes its way to the South American nation, and what isn't sold, an estimated 39,000 tons, is dumped into the desert. And let's check in with my colleague Al Baverstock, who went to Tegucigalpa to cover the presidential election. Honduras saw presidential elections last Sunday, November 28th. Opposition candidate Xiomara Castro won a landslide victory, removing the ruling party after 12 years. Fears of a repeat of the electoral steal and subsequent violence of four years ago were quelled with just 16% of the vote tallied, and ecstatic Hondurans took to the streets of the capital to celebrate the ejection of a government mired in corruption. With 63% living below the poverty line, criminal gangs spurring terrible violence and massive rates of migration leaving the country, there's a lot of work to be done to change Honduras' fortunes. Okay, now let's look at what stories we're following for next week. First, November 25th was the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, and Latin America marked the day with marches throughout the region. The numbers revealed on femicides by the United Nations showed the urgency for change. More than 4,000 killings of women were recorded across Latin America and the Caribbean in 2020. The highest femicide rates are in Honduras, the Dominican Republic, and El Salvador. We will continue following the story as violent free life is one of the goals of the region. And second, we are following the new COVID-19 variant, Omicron, and how Latin America prepares for infections. The Pan American Health Organization asks for precautions and says that the biggest challenge is low vaccination rates. 19 countries in Latin America have vaccinated less than 40% of their population. And with the holidays coming up, experts say people bring their guard down and use less health measures, such as social distancing. And now the answer to our news trivia. The answer is B. This past week, Colombia marked five years since the signing of the peace agreement between the Colombian government and Marxist rebel group Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. In attendance for the anniversary was the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. During the ceremony in Bogotá, the former FARC leader, Rodrigo Londoño, also known as Timochenko, apologized to victims for the violence after more than half a century of armed conflict. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.